Hey, what's up? It's Patrick, and welcome to my guide to Ritual of the Majorat on RuneScape 3. On screen right now is everything you need to repair yourself as a quest. If you need help on where to get the untradeable items, or if you're an Iron Man and need help on where to get the items in general, there's a more detailed item list down in the description below. For the untradeable items, please be sure to check your bank for them first, as they were obtained from previous quests, and it might not let you get another one if you already have it. For the spade, you cannot use the one in your tool belt. You have to have one in your inventory. For combat supplies, you should fill your inventory with food to start do not use any curses or stat boosting potions such as overloads throughout this quest i'll explain later when that part is relevant other than that this should be pretty self-explanatory so feel free to pause the video if you need it as i'm going to get into the guide now this video is brought to you by the awesome members of my Patreon. If you want access to some exclusive perks, check out the link in the description below. Enjoy the video, everyone. To start the quest, go to Sir Tiffy in Faldor Park. You can get near there using the Faldor Lodestone or regular Faldor Teleport. Do note, you have to speak to him quite a few times throughout this quest. And the first chat option is always the one that says Ritual of the Majorat. You know the name of this quest. However, he's involved in a lot of other quests. So the chat option number may change depending on what you may or may not have done with the other quest. Just be aware of that. Anyways, if Feel free to pause the video if you need this as I'm going to continue the guide now. Speak to Sir Tiffy Cashian, select the chaption that says Ritual the Modron and accept the quest. Then select option 1 twice. Go to the nearest bar slightly north of the dock shown by a yellow marker on this map. Speak to Sir Tendeth and select option 1, yes. After cutscene, speak to Sir Tendeth again. Step outside and speak to the injured pirates first, then possibly a couple of the other pirates until someone mentions dragons. I had to speak to three pirates before this happened. For this next part, you may want to watch me do it before doing it yourself as it is potentially dangerous. I don't recommend you just jump into it if you don't know what you're doing yet. So when you are ready to begin, you would step outside the city walls. There are dragons or dragonkins to the east that will spit fire at you. And the idea here is to get to them while using the west side of the trees for cover because if you get hit by the fire, you take some damage and get sent back to the beginning. Each time this happens, you can heal and get more food at the nearby bank. I'm putting up a map of a path to take. You do not have to follow this exactly. This is only to give you a general idea on how you're supposed to move and what direction to go in. It's best to use your own discretion here because you also have these jungle horrors that attack you with melee attacks and you want to protect against that. And you don't want to spend too much time figuring out where you are on the map and what exact tree to go to when it doesn't really matter. You ideally want to run to the closest tree you could find so you don't stay out in the open for too long to get hit by the fireballs. If you're not sure whether a particular tree is good to stand behind, you can examine them and the good ones will say something like, looks good for hiding it. You can use the surge of magic ability here, but be careful with that. You don't want to overshoot your destination. Overall, just be patient. You don't need to jump from tree to tree too quick. Make sure the next tree you're going to actually works and maybe stay behind each tree for a couple seconds each time so you can be sure that you're good. I did this in one try, by the way, but I do know it can be very frustrating if you keep having to redo it. When you make it far enough over here, you get a cutscene. If you misclick while going through a dialogue during the cutscene, you'll exit it. If that happens, take one step to the west, then one step back east behind a tree to re-trigger the cutscene. Go back to Sir Tiffy in Fowler Park. You may want to bank your food or something. You don't need it at this moment, but you will need nine free inventory spaces. Speak to Sir Tiffy and select the chapter that says Ritual of the Majorat. 
Then select option three. I think they were Dragon Kin. Once you're in this room, speak to Sir Tiffy again. And select options one, two, one, three. Just like you did in the quest A Tale of Two Cats, you have to use your enchanted cat speak amulet to find Bob the Cat. You can start anywhere, but I like to start in Burthorp just because that's where his house is. Varrock is also a decent place, so teleport out and then you can right click the cat speak amulet E, choose open, and you'll see his kind of compass like interface that points you in the direction of where Bob is. Just head in that direction and be sure to check the amulet periodically for any direction changes in case you go too far. Once you find Bob, wear your cat speak amulet and speak to him to receive his caller. Click on Bob's caller in your inventory to study it and also click the circular arrow at the top of the window as well to see the other side of it. Now you need to go to any fairy ring, it doesn't matter where, but one of the easiest ones to get to is one between Edgeville and a Grand Exchange. I got there by using the Edgeville Lodestone. Right click the fairy ring, choose destination, and put in code DIR. From this place, right click the fairy ring, choose select destination again, then put in the code AKS to teleport to a place called Ketsi. It should look like what I'm showing in the video. If not, you should try again. You have to put in those two codes. So it's DIR, then AKS. If you're somewhere different, maybe you put in the wrong codes. Go to the middle of the structure and a couple steps to the west, search the rubble to get Tetrahedron 4. Head southeast and climb up the ramp. Right click Bob's collar and use on the north wall on the wall design. Solve the puzzle by using the arrows to position Bob's collar as is shown in the video. It has to be flipped to the side that says Bob. Once you get in this position, you push the up arrow one time which should make the window disappear. If done correctly, it should close by itself, then investigate the wall to receive 5 items. Tetrahedron 1, a statue arm, a note to you, a note to Robert, and Robert's necklace. Go to the southern side of this platform. To the southwest, jump from the ledge to get to the other side. Use the statue arm on the statue. On the west wall, cross the fallen spire. To the north, climb the ladder. To the east, run up the wall jump. So west, climb the wall. To north, use the swing poles. To the east, walk across the beam. Jump over the gap at the end of the beam. To the south, jump from the floor. To the south, climb down next two ladders. Squeeze through a pipe. Right click the rock slide and choose mine. To the north, climb up the wall. To 
to the west, run across the two walls. If you fail at any point, you have to go around back to the obstacle pipe to the southeast. Climb across the handholds. Climb down the ladder. Go east along the northern coast of the island along the water. Search this rubble to find Tetrahedron 3 and a strange device. Head back to the ladder to the southwest. Climb up the next two ladders. To the southwest, jump from the floor. To the south, slide down the roof. Go south. If you still need a spade, you can pick this one up off the floor. Otherwise, everyone head further south and walk across the plank. Search the rubble to find Tetrahedron 2. Walk back across the plank. Head north and climb down the stairs. Two indentations on the west wall and two more on the east wall. Use each tetrahedron on each indentation. Each one of those should have given you a letter, but you didn't have to read it. If you open this quest up from your quest log or quest journal, the four letters are written at the bottom. Now I'm going to show you a map. You need to locate your four letter combination, and that's where you need to go on this map. As for how to get there, I'm going to give you two options, and this is mainly for the people whose coordinates are in the upper portion of the island. You could go backwards through the obstacle again, but that doesn't really save you any time because you still have to go through the obstacle a second time to get back to the dungeon after we do what we're about to do. The second option is what I'm going to suggest for everyone, regardless of where your coordinate is, because it will work for everyone, and it's what I'm going to show in the video. Second option is to teleport out to any fairy ring, then use the codes DIR and AKS again to be sent back to starting point. I'm going to walk you through the whole obstacle again, and you can pause the video when you get near where your coordinate is. Then you need to continue following the obstacle back to dungeon. But first, let me show you what you actually do at your coordinate. When you get near there, you have to dig around using your spade until you find a key, and it's a very specific spot. So if you think you got it but can't find it, try digging the squares around it. Anyways, let me walk you through the obstacle again. By the way, if your coordinate is in the lower portion of the island, you should be able to access it right at the beginning before you do anything, but you still need to make your way back to dungeon at the end after you find a key. Climb up the ramp along the east wall. I'm just reusing the same footage from before to walk you through obstacles since I already nicely edited that, in case you're wondering why my inventory looks different. To the southwest, jump from the ledge to get to the other side. On a west wall across the fallen spire. To the north, climb the ladder. To the east, run up the wall jump. So west, climb up the wall. To the north, use the swing poles. To the east, walk across the beam. Jump over the gap at the end of the beam. To the south, jump from the floor.
It says south, climb down next two ladders. The coordinate is in the northern part. You should be able to access them from this point. After you dig up your key, just make sure to come back here to continue the obstacle as you need to get back to dungeon. Screws through a pipe. Right click the rock slide and choose mine. So north, climb up the wall. To the west, run across the two walls. If you fail at any point, you have to go around back to the obstacle pipe to the southeast. Climb across the handholds. Climb up the ladder. To the southwest, jump from the floor. To the south, slide down the roof. Go south and climb down the stairs. Open the door to the south. On the south wall, search the bookcase to find Thathana's message, read it, and flip through the pages. Also, optionally, you can search a southeast bookcase for a tomb, bainite, or scroll. I think it's to unlock the spell. I didn't do it though, as it's not actually necessary for the quest. After you read the message, return to Sir Tiffany and Fowler Park. Speak to Sir Tiffy and it's like the chapter that says Ritual of Majorat. Go to the Eastern Room in the White Knight's Castle. Speak to Akrasay. And select option three, one, two, three, to receive a Rav's heart and some tele orbs. Head to the northeastern corner of the Varak dig site. You can teleport near there by using your archaeology journal or dig site pendant. Operate the wind chair, climb down. Go into room to the south. Speak to Zandra and select option one, Ritual of Madrat, to receive four stackable beacons.
You might want to re-up on your combat supplies as you get into some fights soon, as well as some emergency teleports as it is not a safe death, but do not get rid of anything previously obtained in the quest. When you're ready, head to this area north of Relica, shown by a yellow mark on this map. You can get near there by using the Fremenic Province Lodestone. travel using this canoe head east and squeeze past the ice block Go towards the south wall, you'll see some small red lines there on your minimap. Jump over the pillar by the red lines. Just a heads up, in the next area that you're about to be in, avoid the yellow dots or undead broavs, as if you get caught by any of them, you'll be thrown into Zamorgal's dungeon. They mostly roam around the middle, so you probably want to stay around the border, but that's not foolproof. You should be alright if you just pay attention. If you get thrown into the dungeon, to escape, you have to search the bed and lift up the tiles to the east of the cell, then enter a tunnel. When you're ready to do this next part, enter this tunnel to the south to continue the quest. Run to west, it says southwest corner of the fortress. Use a beacon from your inventory on the closest tree that you find. Run southwest to the area shown by a yellow marker on this map. You'll find a tree that's a bit bigger than the rest. You want to place another beacon there. Run to a place shown by a yellow marker on this map along the southern part of the area. It's by the red tree on your mini map. Place a beacon on the big tree here. You should get a message in your chat box saying the beacon is directly opposite of the north beacon. Use a rav's heart on the closest rocks to the northeast. Go to this area to the northeast. Place the beacon on a tree here. You should get a message in your chat box saying the east beacon is directly opposite of the west beacon. Head northwest to the area slightly west of the fortress, shown by a yellow marker on this map. Use the rope on the overhang tree. Below this tree is the area where the canoe is and you can freely climb up and down here to leave or get back. Go to entrance of the building in the southwest corner of the area.
defeat the armored zombies around here and pick up the code key and decoder strips that he drops. If you don't remember how to use these, you read the code key for a four layer combination that's different for everyone, then open the door to main entrance on the west side to open the window. So take note of whichever letters you have, drag the decoder strips over those letters in the order that they're given to you. So decoder strip one over the first letter, decoder strip two over the second letter, and so on. Doing this will cover up all numbers in that row except one. Be sure to write these numbers down the same order if you have a repeat letter this code strip does not need to stay there you only do that part just so you can get the number so after you note that number down, you can remove the first score strip to put the second one on there. Once you have your four letter combination, enter it using the arrows, up and down arrows to cycle through numbers. When you get the number you want, you use the right arrow to enter it and left arrow is to delete. If done correctly, they'll let you through the west door when you click on it again. You can drop the code key for the main entrance if you need space. Search the crate to northeast by the stairs to get a code key for the storeroom. Read that code key and use it to open the storeroom door to the west the same way as before. After entering the numbers correctly, you need to click to open the storeroom door again. You need two free inventory spaces. You can drop this code key and open the door to the north. Search the crate in northwestern corner of the room to receive heart magic note and a code key for the reliquary. Read the heart magic notes. Exit to go back to the main room. Clap the stairs in the northwest corner. Try to open the doors and move around until Zamori Gal starts talking. Finish that dialogue. Climb down the stairs to the north. Climb up the stairs to the east. Read the code key for the rel query and use that to open a nearby door to the east the same way as the other two doors. After entering numbers correctly, you need to click to open the reliquary door again. Go to the southern end of the room. Smash the black stone. Exit the building and remember when you're at the main entrance, use the west door. Head to the southeastern corner of this area. Speak to Movario and select option 1 twice. Wear your ring of visibility, run a bit west, and by the pickaxe icon on your mini map, you should see a shadow pedestal. Click on the shadow pedestal to investigate it. Go to the entrance of the fortress to the north, which is a straight run north from here if you think you can avoid the proabs. The surge ability will help with that. Otherwise, if you're not so confident, then go around. Enter a tunnel and jump over the pillar. Head inside the inner structure to the north. Climb down the stairs to the west. To the east, climb down those stairs.
scale the damaged wall to the east. In northwest corner, climb the smashed rampart. You're about to encounter a bunch of aggressive and dangerous water fiends, so maybe you want to watch me do this first. Enter a trap door and go to the southwest corner of this floor. Also, make one free inventory space. Pick up the heat globe, make sure you get this in your inventory, and go back up the stairs to the northeast, you know, the same way you came in. To the west, scale the damaged wall. Go to the east wall and climb the smash rampart. Climb up the stairs, to the west, climb down those stairs. To the south, jump over the pillar. Enter a tunnel. Go back to Shadow Pestle to the south. In this next part, when you actually reach the Shadow Pestle, you're going to have to use your heat globe on it. Sometimes it won't work, and you'll get a message that says something like, that could be a good idea, but you've got other things to do first. It means either the beacons are not aligned properly, you have not placed a Rob's heart in a rock to the south by a southern beacon, you haven't placed the rope on the overhanging tree to the northwest, or you have not talked to Mavario after doing all these things. If you are completely sure you've done all these things, talk to Mavario to ease the Shadow Pestle, and he'll place the heat globe on. It. Apparently there are a few players who have tried removing a beacon from a tree and put it back in a tree that's also worked and there are also some that say reading the notes slash Dantana's message also fixes this. Anyways when you get here place the heat globe on a shadow pedestal. Enter the entrance to south and select option 1. Yes I'm ready. Follow the path to southwest. Touch the stone and jazz to get a cutscene. You get into a fight right after this cutscene, by the way, but it's not too difficult. And you should be okay as long as you have supplies. If not, then be prepared to teleport out. But I did tell you to bring stuff earlier. You can select any chat options for these cutscenes. Fight General Cassard, which should be pretty straightforward. It helps to pray against magic, and if he summons Bouncer, the Hellhound, you can lure him to Wise at Set Tail to kill him. By the way, the reason why I said in the beginning not to use stat boosting potions or curses is because touching the stone at Jess already gives you a pretty significant boost for the entire fight. Using those other things will actually interfere with that boost, meaning they'll bring your stats down too low and you'll not be able to hit the enemies. Basically, it would do the complete opposite of what you wanted to do. You get another cutscene after defeating Kassard, and we'll have to fight Ice Titans afterwards.
While fighting the Ice Titans, you can only attack the two that run at you and your team must kill the rest. You can use Protect from Melee against them if you want. Lucian will be attacking as well. Do not attack Lucian. It won't do anything and it will just hit harder. He'll also occasionally cast a spell at you that looks like a smoking black skull. You have to move at least two squares away when he does that or you'll take constant damage while it's in effect. You get another cutscene after defeating the Ice Titans and will have to fight Ice Demons afterwards. Basically the same idea as the Ice Titans except you can use Protect from Magic if you want. You can only attack the two that run at you. Avoid Lucian's Skull Attack but don't attack him. The Ice Demons can also summon these Icicles that fall around you. At least I think they're supposed to be Icicles or used to be. For some reason they made them look like Christmas presents when I did this. When this happens run away from the Icicles or Christmas presents or else you're going to be trapped. This is bad when a Skull Attack comes at you. It's probably best to just keep moving. You get another cutscene after defeating the ice demons, then you have to go fight a Rav and a couple armor zombies. When this fight starts, I recommend getting rid of any combat familiar as this may interfere. First attack the armored zombies until a Rav spawns, then you need to attack a Rav until he follows you. He needs to follow you so you can lure him over to a rock where you place his heart. Still watch out for Lucian's skull attack. Even if a Rav is near his heart, it still may not work because you have to fight him for a certain amount of time. It took me about 2-3 to three minutes. You know it worked when he starts trying to talk, be careful when attacking him at this moment because it will close out a dialogue and you need to finish that dialogue and continue the quest. If you close out of it, just attack him until it triggers again, but once again just be careful. A rival switch sides and fight for you, you won't be able to do anything or fight anyone for a few seconds, just wait until more dialogue comes up. Eventually the southern beacon should break, you can turn on protect from magic or range here if you want and pick up the four beacon parts, they're all nearby, just look for the red dots on your mini map. When you have all four, click on one of the beacon parts in your inventory to assemble them and put it back in a tree.
When it asks for a number, you can select any chat option. Go west to where the market area usually would be. Once back in Falador Park, speak to Sir Tiffy and it's like chapter that says Ritual of the Majorat. Hope you found this video helpful. If you did, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell for future videos to come if you haven't already. There are also links in the description below for my Patreon, donation link, Twitter, and Discord when you interact with me. Donations can also be directly made through YouTube now. Thanks option near the like button below the video. Catch you later. Peace.